Apex predators, animals at the top of the food web. Their presence keeps ecosystems in balance as they regulate the population to their prey and help maintain biodiversity. In today's marine environments, the great white shark and the orca are some of the largest, most widely distributed top predators. They are able to travel great distances in a matter of weeks, expanding their influence across entire oceans. But just a few million years ago, there lived an apex predator, even higher on the food web. One that could, if it lived today, take big, chunky bites out of a whale. Megalodon, the biggest shark that ever lived. However, with little fossil evidence of this marine giant beyond its teeth, one can only imagine how much it could eat or how far it could swim. That is, until now. Results from a 3D reconstruction of the full body of the megalodon, modelled by an international collaborative team of researchers, have suggested that a single adult megalodon could have fully eaten prey as large as a modern orca in just a few bites and then undertaken a casual transoceanic migration to the other end of the globe. But this begs the question, how do scientists go from looking at teeth to recreating a whole extinct animal with enough confidence to estimate how big their stomachs were? Sharks possess a soft cartilaginous skeleton. Their bones are closer to a human nose than they are to a femur, which makes it unlikely that their remains would fossilize. In contrast, their teeth are hard enough to preserve in the fossil record. This difference leaves scientists with little to look at other than dental remains to study the now extinct megalodon. Even so, we've learned a lot from dental remains. Based on tooth measurements and comparisons with other analogous shark species, namely the great white shark, we've been able to infer that megalodons could be up to 20 meters in length. And that's pretty much it. How fast could they swim? How many daily calories did they need to survive? To answer these questions, it's useful to imagine an ocean some 15 to 10 million years ago. The waters are much warmer than we know today, teeming with seals, fish, and now extinct carnivorous whales. In a sea that would one day become Belgium, a 46-year-old megalodon tiredly swims its last laps. For one reason or another, this shark passes away and its body sinks to the bottom of the ocean. While most of its remains would decompose, many of its calcified vertebrae would fossilize and remain hidden until being excavated in the 1860s. 141 vertebrae were unearthed back then, and despite being stored at the Museum of Natural Sciences in Brussels ever since, they would not be studied in detail until over a century later. In the 1990s, the vertebrae would be identified as belonging to megalodon, measured to estimate the size of the specimen, and then put back into storage. Another day of research came almost 30 years later, as a new generation of scientists, equipped with new technologies, went back to that museum in Belgium to continue the work of their predecessors. An international group of scientists from Switzerland, South Africa, Australia, the UK and the USA worked together on what is to date the most complete reconstruction of a megalodon specimen. First, they used 3D scans of the fossilised Belgian vertebrae to reconstruct the spinal column, scaling it up to real size. They then recreated the skull of a megalodon using an existing 3D scan of the skull of a great white shark, which was scaled up and fitted with 3D scans of a megalodon dentition. The resulting skull was then scaled and attached to the vertebrae, producing a base model of a megalodon skeleton. A 3D scan of the full body of a great white shark was used to add flesh around the megalodon skeleton, producing a full 3D model of its whole body. Having this 3D model allowed the scientists to measure the megalodon surface area, volume and centre of mass. The specimen's mass was calculated using its volume and the density of sharks obtained from previous studies. Once scientists estimated the mass, it was possible to find out swim speed, stomach volume and daily energy requirements based on relationships seen in living sharks, giving us a template basis to make these same estimates in megalodon. It stands to reason that an animal with teeth bigger than your mobile phone would have been eating big animals. Whales, seals and other animals that would put a buffet to shame were hunted by megalodon, something we know from the bite marks left behind on the bones of their prey. But teeth cannot tell us about locomotion 
or caloric needs, it is with the 3D model in place that these questions can start to be answered. With a stomach almost 10,000 litres in volume, a megalodon could eat an entire prey as big as 8 metres, or about the maximum size of a modern orca. And this makes sense from a caloric point of view. The team estimated that the megalodon needed to eat over 98,000 calories worth of food every single day. To fulfill such energetic demands, the megalodon would have needed to eat creatures packed full of calories, like marine mammals, who are known to have calorie-rich flesh. Feeding upon whales up to sizes rivaling today's orcas not only meant that adult megalodons were having more calories per gram, but eating such large prey would have allowed them to survive without eating for around two months. With its average cruising speed of 1.3 to 1.4 meters per second, the megalodon would have been a trans-oceanic migratory super predator able to reach distant sites around the globe without further feeding. Being able to cover such distances made the megalodon an important trophic regulator for two reasons. First, the megalodon would have been an important vehicle to transfer nutrients from one part of the world to the other in relatively short spans of time. A megalodon feasting on a chubby whale in one part of the globe could then travel far away to the other side of the ocean where its waste products would introduce nutrients to that location that would not have been available otherwise. And secondly, as it fed upon even large predators, it would have kept their populations in check. Once Megalodon became extinct, its regulatory effects would have been removed. The large marine mammals of the time would have suddenly found themselves in a different environment without this predatory pressure, something that might have influenced their evolution. Like a relay race, science takes a team of researchers working together across geography and time to expand our understanding of the past and the present. With this new 3D model of the Megalodon, we've been able to learn so much more about the biggest shark to have ever roamed the oceans. And we can't wait to see what new discoveries will be made in the future.